So I got all my testing done on this gun. Do you know what it is? Without opening up another tab and doing a Google search. Yes, it is a Smith & Wesson. And yes, it is the Model 4 22. Long discontinued. One of my all-time favorite semi-automatic 22 pistols. The Smith & Wesson 422. I may do a separate GRV on it. I think I will. Not positive. We'll see how this video does. It is an awesome pistol. Yes, it was produced by Smith & Wesson. I don't think it ever caught on. Primarily because of looks. You get me? It just doesn't have looks that a lot of people like. I bought my first Smith & Wesson 422 way back in 1994. I still have it. It's integrated into one of my BOKs, dudes. Still serving proudly. And it has the 12 round magazines. The 422 was originally designed and issued with 12 round mags. Then the assault weapons bill came out in 94. AWB and they reduced it to 10. Those 12 rounders are extremely hard to get. They're unicorns. But what a great shooting, reliable, super lightweight, accurate pistol it is. And I just wish it had caught on. Wish it'd be, it was still being made. Uh, Smith & Wesson has it going on. They have some other great 22 pistol designs coming out. They already have some out there already. You may have seen it at the trade show. But the 422 was kind of ugly. You won't have that problem with the MMP 22 series. Say hey again to the full size Smith & Wesson MMP 22. I reviewed this back in July of 2012. Five stars, ladies and gentlemen. Five stars. I mean, that's also five stars. They have four and a half to five. The, the MMP 22 is one of my all time favorite modern 22 pistols modern uh, i'm a big fan of the how should we say nostalgic 22 pistols this one isn't really one i mean it's okay it's discontinued let's see if i have one kind of like this guys here we go the cult woodsman out of the tmp family heirloom collection how's that these are my favorite 22 pistols you know the high standards the colts oh my gosh i just love them they shoot good. They have that beautiful bluing. I'm getting excited. This is federal. Yeah, they're heavy, but who cares? You're not going to go hiking with this. Well, I did when I was a kid, but uh, it's just beautiful, man. It's great. Th those are my favorite. But when we go into the modern era, then certain things become more important to me. SAWC, reliability, the ability to put on a can, uh, stuff like that, sight picture, because we're not looking at a gun that was produced in 1950. We're looking at a gun that was made in 2015, for instance. So it should have modern features. Uh, those boxes are checked in spades with a Smith & Wesson MMP22 full size. Say bye to the 422. You may see it again. But that was then, 2012. Here's now, whip sound. The compact. Whoa! That is also an excellent gun. I think back in 2012, in this review... I said that the whole understudy thing is a little bit overplayed. And if you didn't watch that video, it goes something like this. That the common thinking, the group think is, well, I have a Smith & Wesson MMP9, MMP40, ammunition is more expensive. I'd rather, rather get a 22 version of it and train with that. And that way I'll be super good with my MMP9, for instance understudy pistol we've kind of jumped into philosophy of use already super quick by the way i'm not going to spend a lot of time on it uh, i think that can be a valid reason i think it's just way oversold guys way oversold why is that because i think your marksmanship fundamentals will transfer gun to gun you can easily train by dry firing the operation of the controls of any pistol you have you don't even have to shoot you can get your muscle memory down with that i I just don't do it. So, understudy pistol, okay, if you want, but, uh, you know, for the compact, less so because, well, I guess you could say it's an understudy for the shield, and I don't have a shield on the table to compare, but it's going to be similar in size. The grip is very similar to the shield, an excellent subcompact 9. 
Uh, you could say that. I think it's recreational first and foremost. And we're focusing, I guess, on the Smith & Wesson M&P 22 Compact here. Recreational pistol. Just for fun, going out and shooting. Between these two, just these two, which one would I prefer? This one, full size. What? Yeah. Well, recreational SAWC that. is not that big of a deal, right? I don't need an ultralight gun if I'm just going out and playing at the range. In fact, having a lighter, smaller gun is a disadvantage. They're harder to shoot. The sights bounce around more. Bad trigger control is, you know, exaggerated in this gun versus that one. We'll go back to the Colt Woodsman. I mean, like this. This thing's like a, a, a boat anchor. It's so heavy. But I love it. For recreational, it's perfect. Settles it down. You know, look, if you look at what the competitors shoot, they're not looking for something lightweight. Heck, they'll add barrel weights on it to settle it down even more. A pest control pistol. Would this be good? Yeah, totally. Totally. I mean, just to have something on your person. Well, like I said, or not. Maybe snake control. That's funny. Uh, a gopher problem. I, I honestly don't like killing things. You guys know that at this point. I'm an animal lover. But sometimes when things rise to the pest level, like the pigs in Texas, for instance, dudes, all over the southeast, actually, you got to do what you got to do. You got to call it out. So this would be great. You could almost ankle carry this thing. Speaking of which, I think I have tactical doodles. Yeah, I do. Ankle carry G26 still. So this would be a lot easier to carry than that. We're just talking pest pistol, not self-defense. Uh, but what about self-defense? I've mentioned this before. I've mentioned it in here in this review. Hey, is this the perfect choice, 22? Absolutely not. But maybe your wife only likes shooting 22 long rifle. Maybe. In which case, then okay. The advantage that the full size has is 12 rounds. So 12 plus 1. That's 13 total. You're 10 plus 1, speaking of firepower, with this one. I, 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 I never carry, I shouldn't say never, but I very, very rarely would carry just a 22 for self-defense. I think there are so many better options that weigh about the same. Um, another philosophy of use is you just don't like dinking around with often unreliable conversions. Not just for the M&P series, but for whatever, Glock series. A lot of them are non-functioning. They just jam a lot. Go watch my review on them. How about the weight on the compact? Well, this one, the full size is 23 ounces versus an M&P 9, the one I had, I think I sold it, uh, it was 28 ounces, which is a decent weight. This one's going to be lighter still. The M&P 22 compact is only 17? Whoa, <laughs> that is light weight. So win on that front, for if weight is important to you, then you know where to go with it. Uh, accuracy. I really only have one target to show you it's kind of embarrassing but this is it this is <laughs> fired <laughs> in december 14 i'll try to find the video and roll it in somewhere uh rapid firing dude this is eight mags worth i think we're doing drills at eight yards just rapid fire and man was it fun the compact pistol we also ran it with uh, matt out in the desert that was cool uh, should I roll it in here? Uh, I will talk about it, something here in a second. We're talking about accuracy before I leave it. Um, I'll say it's excellent. I, I know I have paper around here, but I lost it. If I find it, I'll roll it in. It'll be like this. This is at Smith & Wesson 422. So this is by my son, Tac D. That's a great group right there. So this is not the M&P 22 Compact, but I'm showing this as a representation. Is that That is what it looks like. Okay, how about features review differences between no the M&P 22 full size and the compact? Well, you still have the safety, you know, and that's for certain states that require it. So they can only make one version. Last time I checked, that's what they're doing it for. Uh, it is very solid. So you can just place it down, use it as a thumb ramp if you want. Be careful you don't impact a slide because you may induce a stoppage. I just ignore it and I don't really care. Uh, one thing that is not on both sides of this and lefties take note is the slide release. Make sure I'm telling you right. Yeah, so it's ambidextrous slide release on the M&P full size right here. Not so much on the other one. Incidentally, these these guns are made for Smith and Wesson by Walther, and that may change. Will they bring them stateside? I don't know. There have been some hits and misses out of the Walther factory. I think these are some hits. 
they, that they've done. Uh, they're pretty excellent, actually. Mag release on both of them is identical to the whole Smith & Wesson line. There's no interchangeable back straps. Uh, I don't mind that at all. I think interchangeable back straps are way oversold, and I don't think most people use them. I know I don't. I usually just use a medium one. I've said that a bazillion times. Here's a look in the magazine well of the compact. Again, a 10-round magazine. Super high-quality one, by the way. Stainless steel. Uh, it does have that super annoying, just like the full size, magazine disconnect, which I detest. So you cannot fire the gun with the magazine out. I'm not going to do field strip. In fact, in most care he's coming up, I don't think I'm going to do field strip anymore just for video length. How about the trigger? Um, it's okay. Let's get the trigger Lighter. scale out. Still off. Oh, dude, I pulled six? Let's do it one more time. That's pretty excellent. And I'm going to pull the full size just by way of comparison. I'm not a super fan of the MMP series of articulated trigger. I think I said that before. Make sure I have this thing all the way cocked. Some of you guys may love it. I, I prefer just a very predictable, non-pivoting trigger. 6.6 six on that one. And the full size is going to pull. I bet you pretty similar. I had the safety on on that one. Identical 6.3 out of the Smith & Wesson M&P 22 pistols. Well, I'm actually kind of surprised on that. The sights on the two guns are a little bit different. Three dot variety on the compact, the full size, at least in this version, uh, no three dot variety. You have a front dot and that's about it. Adjustable in the rear on the M&P 22 compact. Which one would I prefer? Uh, I like these actually. You know, the M&P 22 sights are pretty excellent. You have an accessory rail, just like you did on the full size. Overall, it's just this shrunk down. The M&P 22 compact. Uh, other features are very similar. The, the feel strip, by the way, is a little bit different, and you will see that when you get your instructions or just jump on the internet. You can find all types of information on feel strip. If you get confused, and I guess that takes me to uh, reliability. Well, somewhere along the way, you're going to see the M&P 22 Compact jamming. And it was jamming with that, what was the ammo? It's that Winchester M&P, I think it was made specifically for the gun, promotional ammunition. And I've bought it separate. It's the same ammo, it's just labeled differently. And I, I don't like that ammo. It's like, not lead, but black coated lead. And dang, is it underpowered. It did not like that ammunition. And... I've shot it in other guns and it doesn't like it either. Like the classic 22s, like the Woodsman for instance, it's just not a good ammunition. Now you put something quality in, like CCI mini mags, maybe some Federals, uh, I would probably stick with mini mags, 100%. Totally reliable. This one was a little bit more forgiving if memory serves. m and 22 full size, it seemed like it shucked most of the rounds, although I didn't have that specific Winchester load in 2012 when I tested it, but it was very forgiving and it jammed very little, if any at all. I raved about the reliability of this. My gut feeling is your compact 22 is going to be a little bit more finicky. I could be off on that, but that's what I saw during my testing. It was kind of embarrassing because Matt Smith & Wesson rep comes out, brings out ammo, and we're popping rounds with it, and it ain't functioning. I'm like, what the heck, man? <laughs> Come on. I had to get my own ammo stash out and make it work. There you go. Uh, accessories, stuff you'll need. Well, it has a threaded barrel just like the full size. You could put a can on it. There's a wrench included for that. Uh, you know, would I do it? It's cool. It's definitely cool. It's an option. We showed shooting with a full size with a can uh, years ago. Awesome. It. How about holsters? Mm, I didn't really try any. The advantage of the full size is it does fit the M&P nine holsters which i already have i love that uh, i didn't try the mp22 compact what i'm sitting here wondering is would it fit a shield holster uh, do i have one i have an xds hybrid holster here i'm pretty sure oh dude oh my gosh if it's that perfect wow i did not actually plan that to happen but there you go so it fits an xds holster springfield xds holster it's a composite holster there and this 
hoping I had a shield holster, but I don't. It, I, I'm thinking this is a bigger gun than the shield. There you go. Uh, value. In accessories, I wouldn't change the sights out. Uh, and it does come with two magazines. You might buy some more magazines. I'll leave it at that. Value's excellent. Around 380 A little bit more, a little bit less. Uh, going to the conversions, some competitive options. Would I... You know, I don't, having looked, are there conversions out there for the M&P series? Probably. I, I don't, honestly don't know. I'm just pretty much turned off by any conversions. The only one that I ever tested that worked is the Advantage Arms 22 conversion kits for about $275 for Glocks. Those were fabulous for the most part as long as you run, again, CCIs. Durability, excellent. We talked about the reliability and the track record. Uh, competitive options, there's a lot. Um, again, I kind of step away a little bit from the understudy philosophy of use. I, I don't even really consider that, but you might consider the Browning Buckmark. This is running a trail light upper from Tactical Solutions. That's a nice gun. It's going to be a lot more expensive when you buy all this. You can get them like this from from Browning, but uh, it's it's a kind of a different animal than this because this is more of a traditional target pistol this one can flex into different philosophies of use concealed carry we talked about the defensive thing pest control but it's a competitive option i haven't shown it for a while so i thought i'd throw it on up there i'm really meant to get a 2245 i don't have one maybe i'll roll out a picture that's a great option 2245s are excellent so are the browning buck marks across the board not just a tactical solution modified ones and then you've got the classic pistols, which again are a different animal. Uh, all types of second type of cool dripping from your Colt Woodsman though. Uh, bottom line is, it's a great pistol. Uh, feed it with good ammunition that it likes. You'll find it to be accurate, reliable, <clears throat> adequate firepower at 10 plus one. I think the value is excellent. Uh, I don't think you're gonna find too many, if any, MMP 22 compact owners that have any complaints. Uh, it's a big win for Smith & Wesson, totally worth buying, done.